can never find a genuine preacher of Christ that is not being persecuted. You preach materialistic gospel, nobody will persecute you. You say, if you don't pay tight, you will go to hell. Nobody will persecute you. You say, if you don't give, things will be tight. Nobody will persecute you. You say, your offering will eradicate your suffering. Nobody will persecute you. But the moment you say, Christ is more than enough, all the stones begin to come. Because you cannot identify with Christ in his sincerity and not go through what he went through. Persecution is a twin brother of the gospel of Christ. And any gospel you preach and you're not persecuted, cross-examine what you're preaching and cross-examine yourself. You cannot be preaching the truth of Christ and not be in the eye of the storm. You will be persecuted. It goes with the terrain. They will insult. They will speak against you. They will look for fault because that's what the gospel of Christ attracts along with it. Whenever I'm looking for inspiration, Whenever I just want to get views and opinions on something, the person I turn to is Dr. Ebedamina because I think that his whole explanation on things are very easy to understand. And uh, he breaks down things to the bare minimum that anyone, anyone, who just care enough to listen would understand. So I want us to watch this video of his and the please, like I said before, when you want to listen to a man of God like Dr. Ebed Amina, do that with an open mindset. When you do that, you will benefit a lot from it. And remember, you don't have to necessarily agree with what he was saying, but you can just listen so that you have an idea on his own thoughts and opinion. So, let's watch. Some people say Dr. Damina is always preaching as if he is the one that knows everything. After all, the Bible says we know in part. How can Dr. Damina be shouting as if he's the custodian of Bible knowledge? Well, I'm not shouting as if I'm the custodian of Bible knowledge. But if I have the spirit of God and I have the Bible and I study the Bible, then I have epignosis. And if I have epignosis, I have complete knowledge. When he says we know in part, he was talking about the gifts of the spirit. He wasn't talking about the revelation of God. For example, right now, I have the gift of prophecy. I have the gift of word of knowledge, word of wisdom in me. I have all those gifts. But right now, as I'm looking at you, I don't know what you are thinking. Except that gift kicks in. When it comes to the knowledge of God in the scriptures, we don't know in part. We know in part when it comes to the gifts of the spirit. That's why even if I have a word of knowledge about you, it's a word of knowledge, not a sentence of knowledge. When people call you and they're giving you details of your life, it's a red flag. God does not reveal to anybody those kind of details. He will only give you an idea. Even Jesus will say, you have five husbands, but the one you're with is not. That's all he said. He didn't go into the first husband is called, the second one is called, because it's in part. God won't take your life and put in the hands of another man. No father does that. In fact, he will protect your secret. Even when giving people word of knowledge about you, there are things he will not tell. In most cases, it's an idea. Even the person talking may not be too sure. That's why sometimes they will say, uh, one, two, and they will look at you. Because they want you to confirm. God has not given anybody such authority over another person. That's why it's called gifts of the spirit. And the spirit of God does not disgrace people. When there is disgrace in the operation of the gifts of the spirit, it is an abuse of the gift. It cannot be God. Soothsayers can open up secrets. And diviners and sorcerers, they can predict. They can carry details because Satan is not covering anybody. But when it comes to God, even when the gifts of the spirit are in operation, it is in love. 
He does it in a way he will not cause you damage. He will reveal it in a way he will not cause you harm. And he does it in a way he will not embarrass you in case you need to stay there and be a blessing. Even the woman that Jesus revealed her husbands, Jesus didn't tell people, he told her. So in the operation of the gifts of the spirit, when the information is sensitive, even though it's an idea, it will be whispered into your ears. The man of God will know that this is not for everybody. If he says showman, he will announce it. And if he says showman, you know where it is coming from. It cannot be from God because God's spirit does not do show. God's spirit loves, corrects, instructs quietly to bring the best out of us. After hearing what the man of God has said, let me hear your own take in the comment section below. Do you think his opinion or his views or his take on this whole thing is correct or not? Do you agree with it or disagree? Let us hear that in the comment section below. But let me just share my own opinion with you guys. I think that um, now I'm not a Bible scholar. I'm not a pastor myself, but I just use common sense to imp interpret things. Many people will argue that uh, because you are not led by the Holy Spirit, so you cannot interpret things the right way. And I'm like, who told you that? I am blessed. I am educated. Okay. I have knowledge. Okay. I can add one plus one equal two. Okay, and I can I, I can smell something fishy from, from, from far away. All these prophecies upon prophecies upon prophecies. I have never ever believed in them because I have always thought of them being too cooked up. They are all just too cooked up. You will see a man of God will be doing a kind of like trick and trying to get you to confirm what he is trying to say. They will come up with a very, very vague statement. Uh, your house is near a street, which is near a road, which is near a river. Come on. Many people's homes are near a street. And they, they, there is a water near your home that when the rain falls, then there's water standing. Of course, when rain falls, water will stand. There will be standing water around. It's but normal, you know. So they will come with these outrageous statements. And then they will they want you to confirm with them. And then they will scream, it's a prophecy, it's a prophecy, it's a prophecy. Sometimes the people working in the church will do an investigation. They will uh, follow you around. They will see where you stay. They will see what you do. They will ask about you from your neighbors. And they will gather enough information about you. And they will feed this, those information to the man of God. So he already has so much information about you before he is coming on the pulpit to prophesy. That is what they do. That is all what they do. They fake every single thing. It is all just one fake thing to another. They keep on faking it. That's why you see your man of God, Pastor Dr. Paul Eneche, having crutches, having witches of the same color and the same brand. And every one of them is new. And they will come and say, we have walked the lame. We have performed all kinds of miracles. Our God is good. Amen. And you ask them, if you can perform all these miracles, why are you not helping those who are sick at the hospitals? I mean, the, if your God is good, if you have God's anointing, I believe you can perform your miracles everywhere. Because, for example, if you are an ordained doctor, if you are a certified medical practitioner, you can do your medical job anywhere, right? Anywhere there is a patient, you can go there and diagnose their situation and offer, the offer them the help they need. You can do that. If you are a certified teacher, you can go anywhere and start teaching. 
because you understand the principles on how to carry out your job. Same as if you are an ordained man of God, someone who has been uh, bestowed upon by the Lord, and someone who has been given the gift of deliverance and healings. I think you can do it anyway. So why don't you go to the hospital and perform those same miracles? They won't go there. They will want people to come to their churches. They will want to do that in an environment that they themselves have total control over. Because they know deep down in their heart that all what they are doing is a lie. They know. Since the man of God, Paul Enoche, was called out, he stopped doing it. Right? Yeah. So that's why I'm happy that we have social media and uh, anyone who is doing something excessively, anyone who is taking people for a fool will be called out and people will see them for who they really are. That's why I thank God for social media. But enough about me. What about you? Let us hear your own take in the comment section below. Like always, we love hearing what you have to say.